Hey guys, welcome back. Besiege Early Access Coverage. This is episode 2, I'm Enigmius, and today we're building a catapult. A very simple, simple catapult. Almost everyone knows what a catapult is. It's an old siege engine that was used to lob big rocks and things uh, at castle walls and over castle walls. Very, very straightforward in terms of how they worked back then and also uh, how they work in this game, but it takes a little experimenting to come up with something that will work because we are dealing with uh, a fairly um, robust physics system. Things. The easiest way I can describe it is that you will have some of the most spectacular and entertaining failures in this game. Um, at, to, almost to the point where the failures are better than the successes just because <laughs> the, the failures are unexpected how they turn out. I didn't want to do anything particularly complicated and, and you know just for these first few episodes I want to try and keep it as simple as possible just so that it's approachable and people can look at it and say yeah I, I can relate to that I could probably do something like that if we start out trying to be like super complex for no reason then people are just kind of like yeah that's too much I don't like that so these these wheels that I put on are brand new they were just put in in the last day or two uh, they're big bulky wheels with all kinds of different connection points on them in odd places very strange places to put connection points on a wheel but they're there and we're not going to be taking advantage of any of that today what i'm trying to do is set up the sturdiest frame that i can come up with um w you know without sitting down and and you know getting an engineering degree and all these uh, all the, the stuff that i uh could probably do I would imagine engineers love this kind of game because it gives them an opportunity to just play around and have fun with things that they have to use every day at work anyways. Now, the whole idea of this catapult is it's going to be basically a long arm with a projectile holder on one end of it and the other end that we're just starting to put into place now is going to be held in place by a pair of swivel joints. And the swivel joints basically just allow you to have uh, one thing connected to another thing with the joint that rotates. So it's, if you think of it in the context of something similar to a hinge, but with a greater range of movement, then you'd be in, you know, not too bad shape trying to understand what these swivel joints do. And keeping in mind that currently there's no resource system in the game, these things, you don't have to buy anything, it doesn't cost anything, you don't have to earn anything. I don't know if there are plans to change that at some point in the development, but for now everything is free, so you just build whatever you want. In this case, you can see I'm using some temporary blocks just so that I can build around and get that one piece in between the two swivel joints and then I take the temporary blocks away and now we've got the beginnings of the arm that will hold the projectile holder that will hold the flaming ball that we will hopefully be launching at this castle wall in front of us. There's actually the castle wall which if you look really closely is lined with archers on this side. They don't move even when they're firing they don't move but they're there and then behind that is a little village set up. It's got a couple of cottages that, you know, we can easily set on fire and we're, we're going to do our best to set on fire. So at this point, it's just a combination of getting the systems in place to make the thing work and then also making sure that everything is strong enough so that all the stresses that we're adding to it with the arm swinging and the weight and the contracting springs that we're going to be using to give us the force to actually move the arm don't just tear the whole machine apart because that's kind of the the worst case scenario you can see here comes the arm building it back where you're going to, going to be using a lot of braces there's a brace that allows you to connect one point on a block to another point on a block and it strength strengthens the um the position of the blocks they aren't as likely to move I guess I'm doing a very poor job of ex explaining what a brace is but it just makes sure that things don't shift around as much as they might want to if they weren't braced uh, and that's one of the things with this whole design process is that if you don't brace things if you don't build things strong enough it just pulls itself apart all of the wood pieces turn into splinters and toothpicks which don't make for very effective siege engines now you can see this is the very basics. The thing that we're lacking right now is a means of making that arm move so that it can actually launch that orange ball of fire that's sitting in the holder. Which, like I say, this is something that I've experimented with. I've tried a number of different things. I've tried um, the contracting springs in different locations and ultimately found that the less sort of angle 
less angling going on with the placement of the springs, the less likely it is to pull the, the machine apart when you activate it. If we can just do like a simple straight line uh, where the, the springs are going to travel along, then that kind of works a little bit better for us. Now, in this case, I'm building these pillars in the back because these are what's going to hold uh, the stationary side of the spring and then the other side of the spring will be attached to the end of the arm. And I wanted to brace these a little bit, but you'll notice when we actually get around to firing it that I only brace the outside and the inside ones will wobble quite a bit when we activate it. And that I left it in um, specifically to illustrate the difference between what happens when you've got these different things going on because the, the blocks don't necessarily connect when you place them together. But you can see where I'm running one end of the brace down to another spot and we get basically a 90 degree angle that we're bracing and you know bracing very thoroughly because it's all free and there's no kill like overkill so that's that's what we're doing and i think it also kind of makes the machine look a little bit more interesting when you've got those those braces in place as opposed to just the, the plain wood frame it's an aesthetic thing but it's also functional i would expect that braces would be the one thing that people will get very very familiar with in very short order uh, just because they're so important, unless you're building everything out of solid wood, in which case your machines will be extremely heavy and will have a hard time moving around without falling apart. But we're getting closer. It's, it's not complicated, right? It's just basically a frame with wheels on it. And we used all those wheels because, again, like I mentioned in the last episode, when you've got a, a long length of like a beam or something like that and you don't support it enough, it can sort of buckle in the middle and we don't want that. So that's why I put all the wheels running all the way down. And again, because they're free, why not? We don't want to worry about this thing basically just splitting in half the instant we hit the play button. So now we're kind of looking at it in terms of we've got the contracting spring uh, that will be going into place uh, as soon as we, we figure out how we're going to connect it. And we don't want the spring touching the sides of that holder because, again, that little orb in the holder is on fire. So we... <laughs> I've set so many machines on fire with my own flaming orb. It's uh, it's it's quite funny, I think. But now we've got uh, those things on the on the arm now, kind of sticking out to the sides. That gives us a little bit of space so that the spring can go up to the the pillar. I guess you can say beside it without necessarily touching the orb. And that's almost everything that we need to make this guy work. Now, when we press play, we're not actually going to be driving the machine but you can see it the spring is making it bounce and then we hit L because that's the key to contract the springs and we get a good launch out of the whole deal and you can see I let it sit here for a little while because the archers are shooting at it and it just it doesn't take long for them to wreck a perfectly good uh, siege engine and from another angle so you can see the full arc of the orange sphere flying around simple right simple simple stuff it's a it's a matter of learning all the different components and how they work and you can see now <laughs> the toll that the arches are taking on this guy so in the next episode we're going to take on another one or two components and we're going to come up with something that we can build to make use of those components and show it off and that's how we're going to go for the next little while until we've covered enough components that we can start getting into things that are a little more complex so if you want to be notified when i add those videos easiest way to do that is to subscribe to my channel uh, and or follow me on social media. Links for that are in the information box below the video. Thanks for watching, guys, and take care.